this video we are going to introduce you to different parts of the hydraulic bench. Then we are going to demonstrate and show how, we, how different parts of the hydraulic bench work. And lastly we are going to be showing how to compute different, the discharge using the hydraulic bench. This introduction to parts. The hydraulic bench consists of approximately 12 parts. The first part is the sump tank. It contains all the water required for the operation of the sump tank and it is included inside the hydraulic bench. The second part is the motor and pump. The motor and pump takes the water from the sump tank and circulates it throughout the entire hydraulic, pump, hydraulic bench. To on or off hydraulic, the motor and pump, you can use the motor off on button. Once you've turned on the motor, then you need to control the flow through the entire hydraulic bench. For that, you have the flow control valve. You can increase or decrease the flow through, through the entire hydraulic bench via the control, flow control valve. To monitor the amount of flow or to see the amount of volume that is being accumulated in the hydraulic bench, you can use sided tube and scale. Then, once you're done with all your operation on the hydraulic bench, you can drain the entire water from the sump tank using the drain valve. Once you turn on the hydraulic bench, the water comes over to the inlet ceiling baffle valve, which diverts the entire flow down to the open channel instead of letting it go straight up. The open channel transfers the water through the weir carrier onto the tank ceiling baffle valve, which transfers the water directly to volume measuring tank. The volume measuring tank contains all the water. You can use it to measure the discharge or and you can use it to store the water. If you want to empty the volume measuring tank or keep the volume measuring tank at a steady level, you can use the dump valve. And to, to control the dump, the dump valve, you have the dump valve handle, which you can lift or keep it down there. In case you need a lot of water and you don't want it to exceed the weir carrier level, you, you have the overflow, overflow, which is provided by the makers of the hydraulic bend so that you don't let the flow go over the weir carrier and disrupt the flow itself. Demonstration work in the hydraulic bench. Turning on the hydraulic bench. Once you turn on the hydraulic bench, then you're supposed to open the flow control valve. No sooner do you open the flow control valve, the water in the the water in the volume measure tank tends to rise. You can see that in the side tube and scale as you can see over here. Once you're done with the entire operation, you can close the, the motor off on button. Demonstration working of hydraulic bench. Working of the hydraulic bench. What happens when you turn on the motor off on button? When you turn on the motor off on button, the tank stealing baffle valve transfer the water to open channel and then to the tank stealing baffle valve. The tank stealing baffle valve can transfer all the water to volume measuring tank as you can see over here. The volume measuring tank tends to increase, store the entire water. You can, <coughs> you can dump the entire water using the dump valve like we've seen over here. You can see clearly see over here that the water being dumped out when the dump valve is lifted. In case you need a lot of water, what are you supposed to do and how the overflow works? Let's suppose we have a lot of water being accumulated. As soon as the water tends to rise, it is a it will tend to reach the weir carrier level. As the water is coming inside through the weir carrier, if it was allowed to overflow or go beyond the weir carrier level, it will tend to disrupt the flow. Therefore, we have the overflow, which is exactly at the point where we need it to be. Calculation Computing Discharge via the Hydraulic Bench Volume current computation via Hydraulic Bench consists of the following steps. First of all, you turn on the Hydraulic Bench. Next, 
You set the hydraulic vintage you require. For example, you can insert a weir in the weir carrier and set the flow amount control using the flow control valve. After that, you open. <coughs> As you've set the hydraulic vintage you require, you use a could be time convenient to you from the site to human scale and find and start your stopwatch. Upon reaching a certain amount of volume using the sighting tube scale and the amount of time elapsed using your stopwatch, you can will discharge using the QT by V, as you can see over here. That's all. Our instructor was engineer Muhammad Salman, and our group members include Omer Shafiq narration, video by Osama, Mudassir, Halim, Hamza Alam, Arsalan Shweb, Mustaja. The presentation was made by Hassan Amjad, Muhammad Muzammil Hussain Khadak, Abdul Jawa, Nabil Wali, Noman Liyakat, and Muhammad Zahir Khan. The video compilation was done by Azimullah Shah. Thank you very much.